Thanks for watching Wood and Shop. I'm Joshua Farnsworth. I'm here with these gentlemen at Colonial Williamsburg at the Hayes Cabinet Shop, and they've been so kind as to invite me here to give you a tour of their shop. So let's introduce each one of these guys and then go have a look at their shop. Good morning, I'm Corey Loftime, supervisor of the Cabinet Maker Shop. Been here for 35 years. Welcome. I, I think perhaps the piece that I enjoy building the most are chairs. Enjoy the, uh, the compound angles, the, the sculptural qualities, and enjoy exploring uh, how the pieces were originally laid out, proportioned, um, getting to the, the head of the man that made it 240, 50, 60 years ago. And I'm Ed Wright, and uh, I specialize in the shop in making harpsichords. It was an extra offering that our shop historically offered in the 1760s. And it can cover everything from case construction to veneer work and lay work, uh, as well as strings, keyboards, all the working parts of uh, a plucked keyboard instrument. So it's got a lot of different things to keep you occupied and keep you interested. Hi, I'm Bill Pavlak, a journeyman cabinet maker. Been here for 10 years and um, here really enjoy probably most of all the process of trying to figure out how they did this stuff back in the 18th century and then doing it that uh, same way. Hello, I'm Brian Weldy. I've been here for seven years and I'm currently working on uh, three chairs, a case piece, and I'm doing a little turning. This is the site of the shop occupied by Anthony Hay, uh, we think as early as 1751. Very successful cabinet maker. Only ran this business for roughly 15 years when his health failed him, and yet the man had done so well that he then buys the Raleigh Tavern, leases this building out to a cabinet maker from London, Benjamin Bucktrout, who's here for several years, and then ultimately it goes to uh, Edmund Dickinson, who, after several years, is off to fight in the Revolutionary War. This is a reconstructed building. The archaeology here was, was very thorough in the late 1950s. Actually, it was the first site in town that was scientifically uh, dug. It turned up over 60, 80, 100,000 artifacts. I really don't know what that, that number totaled to. Um, so this is not the original building, but it's, it's on the footprint. This is the size and general form of the shop, which at that time would have made it a, a large shop. This site, this complex, consisted also of a small but nice home, a kitchen, and another little dependency right on the edge of the stream. We really don't know what its function was. We know that Anthony Hay bought this property for not much more than the cost of a single lot on the main street. Uh, stretch that over the, the stream here. The speculation initially was water power, but the archaeologists found absolutely no um, evidence um, suggesting water power. Uh, it's a matter of documentation that he got a good deal on two lots roughly divided by a ditch. We had uh, Quite a bit of walnut generously supplied us by Hurricane Irene several years ago that we had sawn up on the lumber and stacked in the uh, adjoining lot here. Brickyard is further down this path, but we initially start out stacking the lumber here. We've taken a couple of the stacks inside. Um, the rule of thumb you generally hear on drying lumber, air drying lumber, is a year print thickness. Uh, you leave it much longer than that and, and it starts to deteriorate. One of the things we hope to acquire, um, perhaps by the end of this year, is a drying shed back behind the shop so we can protect the lumber and continue it uh, to the proper moisture content. This is, again, all black walnut. Yeah, I'd like to invite you into the shop. We always have a nice assortment of things underway. And of course, as cabin makers, it's all the fashionable furniture forms. Um, there's a lot of confusion 
with the visitors that come by in terms of carpenters, joiners, cabinet makers. Uh, we don't frame up buildings. We're not carpenters. We don't pit saw the lumber. We're not sawyers. And we generally don't make the architectural molding you trim out an interior of a home with. That's the joiner. As cabinet makers, our roots specialize out of the joiner's trade, but we're the joiners that made the the special freestanding pieces initially required of the cabinet room. So come on in and see some of the things that we've done. If you're interested in learning traditional woodworking with hand tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com where you'll find free video tutorials, buying guides, workshop tours, and reviews. Make sure you subscribe to receive my regular blog posts and YouTube videos, and don't forget to check out my 10 steps for getting started. Enjoy!